This is the Decoding Obesity Podcast, where we simplify, demystify, and decode obesity, helping you lose weight and feel great. So gear up for a fascinating journey through this ever-evolving field, and let's see what we find. And please remember that the thoughts and opinions on this podcast do not constitute medical advice. Don't forget to visit our website, www.decodingobesity.com, for show notes and more info. And now, here's your host of the Decoding Obesity Podcast, Dr. Avishkar Sabarwal. Is obesity in the genes? Can it be inherited? I know these are some of the questions that sometimes do come up in the minds of people with obesity. Hi friend, welcome to another episode of the Decoding Obesity Podcast. Before we dive into this very interesting topic, I just want to request you to please leave me a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, I want to see you in the Decoding Obesity Facebook community. It's a free community. Join in and interact with people who are on a similar journey as yours. A lot of us still hold this misconception that obesity is all about willpower and self-control. I know I have mentioned this in the past as well, and I just want to reiterate that obesity has been recognized as a chronic disease. A 2012 online poll of 1143 adults conducted by Reuters and the market research firm Ipsos actually found that 61% of the US adults believe that personal choices about eating and exercise were responsible for the obesity epidemic. But interestingly, the biologic cause of obesity was proposed as early as 1907. As with other chronic diseases, there is a genetic component to obesity as well. But before you start blaming it all on the genes, I do want to point out that this is certainly not the complete picture. Let's talk about the genetics. There have been various studies done on this to explore the genetic basis of obesity. Quite a few landmark studies were actually done before we had the technology for genetic analysis. How were these studies done then, you might wonder? Well, these were done in twins. Ever wondered why identical twins look similar? That's because they're genetically very similar. Fraternal twins, on the other hand, are not genetically similar and that's why they also look different. So in 1976, there was a Scandinavian study conducted by M. Borgeson. He aimed to answer this very question. How much of a role do genes play in obesity in children? The study design was simple and yet elegant. He enrolled 40 identical twins and 61 fraternal twins in his study. The twins that were selected for the study had at least one of the twins at 115% of their ideal body weight. What makes this study really amazing is the fact that these twin pairs had the same environment right from the womb till the time they were studied. What he found was that the heritability of obesity was anywhere between 40 to 60%. In 1986, Albert Stunkard at the University of Pennsylvania conducted another study proving this point further. He and his colleagues looked at Danish adoption registry of 540 adults. The adoption records included the heights and the weights of the adoptees, biologic and adoptive parents. And when they analyzed the data and they looked at the BMI for both sets of the parents, what they found was that despite having shared an environment with their adoptive parents, the adoptees BMI approximated those of their biologic parents rather than their adoptive parents. This study of course pointed towards the impact of genes on obesity but did not provide any information on the extent of this impact. So the same scientists performed another study. They looked at identical twins that were reared in different environments to distinguish between the importance of shared genes and shared environment. This study was a little more complex but what the scientists basically concluded was that the heritability of obesity was about 70%. As if this weren't enough, a group of scientists wanted to see if genetically similar individuals would respond similarly to overfeeding. So they enrolled 12 pairs of identical male twins and overfed them about 1000 calories a day, 6 days a week for a total of 84 days in a 100 day period. In this study, even though the individual changes in the body composition and weight gain varied considerably, these changes were significantly similar within each of the twin pairs. Now heritability is understandable. But is it one gene or a multitude of genes that causes this? Well, the answer to this question is yes. You see, there are certain forms of obesity which are very very rare that are monogenic wherein it's a single gene mutation that leads to obesity. The effects in at least 15 genes that cause this kind of obesity have been identified but these again are very very rare. 
The susceptibility to common obesity that we see is polygenic. That is, it's because of an interplay of various different genes. Not only that, these genes vary in the extent of their expression, making it even more complex. Genes are the basis for the signals of energy balance in the body and responses that guide food intake. Small changes in these genes can affect their levels of activity. We often hear about nature versus nature in a lot of diseases and this is exactly the situation with obesity as well. While genetics does play a heavy role in our physical makeup, it is the environment that leads to the full expression of these genes. And to prove this, actually people have done studies. There was a study done in Norway called the Hunt study which concluded that genetically predisposed people are at greater risk for higher BMI and that genetic predisposition interacts with the obesogenic environment that they're living in resulting in a higher BMI. More importantly however, the BMI has increased over the past few decades for both genetically predisposed and the non-predisposed people. So this basically implies that the environment actually trumps this situation and it remains the main contributor towards obesity. And there was another study called the Logic Study, which looked at the role of genetics in obesity treatment success through lifestyle changes in children with obesity. And this study also concluded that genes actually play a very minor role in weight reduction by lifestyle changes, and that you know the environmental, social, and behavioral factors are much more important to consider in obesity treatment strategies. In the end, I would say, that it is definitely an interaction between the genes and the environment but as these studies have proven it's you know the environment that really plays a very very big role in the development of obesity and even in the weight loss strategies that we apply however you know the relative impacts of these genes the development and the environment are not constant for any individual and it's these varying levels of interaction that causes increased complexity in the development and management of obesity Well, that's all we have time for today. I hope you've all enjoyed this episode. You've been listening to the Decoding Obesity Podcast. Please remember, the information in this podcast should not be used in any legal capacity whatsoever. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are solely of the host and his guests and do not constitute medical advice. Views and opinions on this show do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of any organization. And that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you so much for listening in. Don't forget to visit our website, www.decodingobesity.com, for show notes and more info. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please feel free to rate, review, and subscribe on your preferred podcast listening platform. We really appreciate that effort. Until next time.